All right, so today we're going to be talking about the arthropods, the phylum Arthropoda. Here we got a picture of the Hawaiian pom pom crab. It's it's pretty cool looking. Anybody ever seen one of these in the water before? No. Oh yeah, me neither. <laughs> okay, so some of the objectives today, huh? That's a, that's a good question. You have to ask them. Um, so today we're going to be looking at the form and function of arthropods. We're going to learn some things about decapods, which is what crabs are. And we're going to learn about these aspects of crabs, or these same aspects that we're learning about for all of the animals this semester. How they breathe, how they digest things, how they reproduce, and how they move. Okay, so here we have that same phylogenetic tree again that we've been looking at. The crabs are right over here, they're the third branch from the right, and we can trace the different evolutionary branching points from the ancestor to get to them. So crabs, they are eumetazoans, they have true tissues, they have bilateral symmetry, they do have um, body cavities, and finally, they're, they're protostomes. So we're finally going to learn about what exactly protostomes and deuterostomes are. So this refers to the the embryo, in the embryo of an animal, the first opening that forms is called the blastopore. In protostomes, the blastopore will go on to become the mouth. In deuterostomes, the blastopore will go on to become the anus. So animals like us, humans, and sea stars, and pretty much every other vertebrate are deuterostomes, so we form the anus first and the mollusks, the arthropods, and the annelids are protosomes, so they form the mouth first. An easy way that you guys can remember this, the difference between protostomes and deuterostomes, is that deuterostomes starts with dut, just like dutes or doo doo. And, uh, and, and deuterostomes form the anus first. Okay, so that's the easy way that you can remember that. Here we have ex some external features of decapods. So decapods are the order that crabs are in, and uh, they're named that way because they have they have ten limbs. They have five pairs of limbs. So you don't have to memorize everything that's on this figure, like the pleopods and the telson's. But the main things to take away from this figure is the body regions. So arthropods are generally split into these three body regions, the abdomen, the thorax, and the head, or the cephalon. So things like crabs and also spiders have the head and the thorax fused to create what's called the cephalothorax. Okay, and here we have a picture of a crab. So the, uh, a couple of things about the crab, the the legs in the back, they're adapted for swimming. They look like paddles. And the, the crab claws are called uh, the cella, or chele. Okay, so arthropods, uh, including the crabs, they grow through molting, which is called ecdysis. And there's three stages to this. The first stage is the peeler stage, and in that stage, there's a soft exoskeleton that starts to form beneath the current exoskeleton. Then comes the buster stage, which is named because the shell will actually split down the back of the crab, and the crab will begin to back out of its old shell. And then finally comes the buckram shell phase, and in that phase the crab will take in a large amount of seawater and absorb the calcium from that water to help in forming the new shell. Here's a look at the crab life cycle. So um, after the crabs mates, the female crab will put the fertilized eggs together in a big bundle called a sponge. And she'll swim somewhere and she'll release that sponge into the water. And the crab larvae will get dispersed. And the first larval stage, or the first seven larval stages of a crab is called the, the zoea, or the zoeal stage. And it looks kind of like this. After that comes the, the megalopal stage. And the megalops, they look like this. They kind of look like miniature lobsters. And 
And that's the final larval stage. After that, they become juvenile crabs, which look pretty similar to the adult crabs, and then they molt some more and become adults. Okay, now the way that you can tell the difference between the male versus the female crabs is by looking at their, their abdomens over here. Can anybody tell us what the other word for a crab's abdomen is? Apron. The apron, right on, you guys are on it. So the female aprons, they're, they're broad, and the, the male aprons, they're a lot more narrow and skinny looking, kind of like this. So they, they kind of look like another aspect of male anatomy. You can remember it that way. And now for locomotion. So the way that crabs move around is by walking with their legs, like a lot of other things. Crabs are, are they're pretty good at moving. They're highly mobile. The back legs, like I mentioned earlier, they're adapted for swimming. So that's why they're, they're shaped like paddles. They're also called swimmerettes, that final pair of legs. And as far as why crabs walk sideways, if you look at our knees, our knees, for the most part, they point forward, they bend forward. For crabs, it's sideways. Crabs have their legs on the side, and it's a lot more efficient for them to, to move sideways because of that. That's the way that their legs bend. Okay, for digestion. So crabs have three different mouth parts that they use in eating. The first one, the ones that are um, outermost, are called the maxillipeds, and those are used in food manipulation um, to bring the food closer to the other mouth parts. The second pair, also to a certain extent, uh, assists in food manipulation. Uh, that's the maxillae. And finally, you have the mandibles, which do most of the heavy lifting of the tearing of the food. Okay. As far as the circulatory system, just like you guys said from the quiz, crabs have an open circulatory system. And their blood is called, or arthropod blood is called hemolymph. So it's a combination of blood and interstitial fluid. Crabs have a hemocell, which is an open body cavity. So they've got their, they've got their organs here, and their blood will directly open out into this hemocell so that all of their organs get directly bathed in blood. It's different from uh, animals with a closed circulatory system like us because all of our blood strictly stays in our vessels. Okay, and the way that crabs breathe is they do, they do what's called countercurrent gas exchange. Basically, what that means is that water and blood flow in the opposite direction. A lot of mollusks do this as well. Um, and the reason that they do this is to ma maximize the gas exchange. You have the oxygen-rich water flowing in the opposite direction as the blood. So the oxygen-poor blood will, will get the most oxygen from the water. <laughs> Okay, and um, as far as your homework, do you guys remember that assignment that you had to do on the, on the plants where you had to write the intro and the first two body paragraphs? You're going to do the, exactly the same thing, but on your animal now. And make sure you include your work cited and your references. It doesn't have to be perfectly formatted. Um, just make sure you include your sources though. Yeah, Kiana. <laughs> APA, yeah, don't do MLA. Okay, and your group presentations, those are, those are coming up, so it's a good idea to start uh, talking with your groups about that.